You may have heard of the term beauty and brains. This literally means when your beauty blends with your intelligence, you will become invincible. Although beauty is a very powerful aspect in our lives, without intelligence or knowledge, beauty is not powerful by itself. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my top tips for beauty and also my top tips for brains. Since I love you guys so much, I'm going to be having all my video notes and everything that I've researched in the caption down below is going to be linked to a Google document. Anyways, without further ado, let's get started with the video. Firstly, let's focus on beauty. Everyone is beautiful. There is no need to feel that pressure to become more beautiful to fit into society. I personally think that becoming more beautiful, working on my beauty is nothing to do with other people. It's more to do with how I feel about myself and the confidence that I gain through looking after myself. You want to do what's best for you and what's going to make you look better. So the first thing that I love to work on is my skin. It's incredibly important to remind yourself if you're buying products, don't buy products because people say that it's good and because because people recommend it and most of the time it's just monetized and people are just trying to get you to buy a product. When you want to buy a product you should be doing research on your skin type beforehand and you should be researching what you need. For example if you're struggling with dry skin don't buy something that doesn't work for dry skin because obviously it won't help you and sometimes it can actually make your skin get worse. And if you don't know your skin type you can take a quiz, go to a dermatologist or just kind of figure out by yourself. A lot of people tend to put a lot of work into their skincare routine and it can work for some people but for me personally I think that a simple routine is always the best. Really good cleanser, a good toner and a really good moisturizer. If you want to add essences or any type of serum in between, I recommend not using it every single day because it can damage your skin over time because most of those products are very high concentration in chemicals. A simple routine actually turned out to be the best and most effective way to clear up my skin and to kind of give my skin a bit of a break because you don't really need to be using every single product that people are advertising. and You only really need the key essentials. For daytime, make sure you always apply sunscreen and for nighttime using aloe vera gel before you put your moisturizer on is going to really soothe your skin. Lastly for skincare using a gua sha or hand massages really just helps to sculpt your face reduce swelling and puffiness so what I like to do is use a gua sha in an upwards motion and I have been doing this for maybe about a week now and I can definitely see a difference and my skin does feel a lot more tighter also it just really helps with lymphatic drainage. We're going to be talking about hand care and nail care. Hands are very important. If you see someone with really well manicured hands and their hands are well moisturized, it kind of gives off the signal that they like to take care of themselves, they have good hygiene. Nail care is the most important part of hand care. I used to have really long nails and people used to compliment me on it all the time. The thing that I really just stuck to was consistency, but also using a nail polish really helps just to strengthen your nails and give it an extra layer of protection if it almost breaks. As well as this, using a nail file and kind of shaping it in a almond shape really helps protect breakage whereas if you don't file your nails it's much more easier for your nails to crack and rip. Those two tips are the ones I live by and I hope that you guys try it out. If you're not allowed nails due to your lifestyle, your work or anything like sports, just having really neat nails are also a really good indication of good hygiene so you don't necessarily need to have long nails. Want to talk about brows? Make sure that you pluck and shave your brows quite often and to make sure to find what brows actually suit you. I used to have my natural brows which is totally fine but I found that when I like plucked them to look straighter it made me look a lot more put together so I would definitely recommend trying out different eyebrow shapes. It can actually change the whole appearance and structure of your face. If you can't go to a salon or anything obviously you can just do it at home. These are literally the only things that you need to plug and shave your brows. I would highly recommend to invest in a really good perfume. For example perfumes actually send off a signal of what type of a person you are and it can make you feel and appear as a more put together person. Perfume can actually really help just to suit your own personality and your own style. I'm a big fan of vanilla perfumes and really those cozy type of perfumes because I think it really suits me and I also think that they smell so nice and they smell so captivating. So most of the times I would recommend just having a perfume that you stand by and that you use quite often. It will make you feel special to yourself and also to others. They will kind of know your personal smell over time. 
Hair care is so incredibly important and I honestly should invest a little bit more in my hair because my hair is pretty average at the moment. But I have found a way that does work for many people. So using fermented rice water, you can find a tutorial on a website or on YouTube, but using fermented rice water is actually saving the water that you use to wash your rice, but also it's so incredibly good for your hair. It helps to strengthen your hair. It also helps to give your hair a bit more shine. I stopped using this hack quite a while ago, but I did do it for about two weeks and I already saw a difference So if you guys do want to try something to your hair, I would recommend using fermented rice water Using heat on your hair is incredibly damaging For example, if you're using a straightener or a curler that involves heat Your hair is more likely to become frizzy and damaged over time so I had invested in a, like a $60 heat protected But also this was a leave-in conditioner So it was actually um, kind of like a two-in-one I'm gonna put it up right here This Lush um, hair conditioner, not sponsored at all It keeps my hair safe from the heat And it smells so good So I definitely recommend that if you guys do have it in your country Next is fashion. Fashion is something I will rave on for years and years and years. The only thing that I stand by is always experiment in your fashion. Don't restrict yourself from trying new looks, colors, textures, and styles. Never restrict yourself from trying something that you think might look good on you. If something doesn't look good on you and doesn't suit you, don't try to make it fit you because it's a trend or because other people are telling you that it could look good on you. If you personally don't enjoy a type of style, you want to know what works best on you. You don't want to end up wearing something that makes you uncomfortable or it makes you look less attractive. Focus less on the recent trends because trends are so frequent these days. You could have something trending and it could be out in about two months. So I recommend to actually find clothing pieces and styles that suit your personality and your personal style and stray away from trends. You can take inspiration from trends if you do actually like the trends yourself, but actually before purchasing, think to yourself if you actually like it or if you're just purchasing it because it's a trend. It promotes hyper-consumerism, so you're actually wasting a lot of money that you're not going to ever get back. Invest in your pieces and make sure that it's something that you would wear for a long time. Personally, I have really been enjoying the elegant, chic, and kind of classic look these days, especially inspired from the 90s. I think these pieces are just so timeless and it just makes you look really put together without even trying that hard. I just feel the most confident in these types of clothes these days. I also really like vintage pieces like this necklace is so freaking pretty and I think it looks really good on me as well. If you genuinely like something then you should wear it no matter what other people say. I don't really use social media too much. But I really do like using Pinterest, TikTok or just Instagram to find inspiration for my fashion sense and my fashion style. So I'm able to develop it, come up with new ideas, just exploring stores. Seeing what pieces you actually gravitate towards, not because it's a trend. Think about what you actually kind of go towards when you're looking at a store. Even if you don't buy it, it kind of indicates what type of personal style that you're into. Remind yourself that your style is always going to change. It's not going to stay the same forever. Donate some of your clothes when something just doesn't fit you anymore. When you have a lot of clutter in your closet, it can kind of ruin your creativity and make it a little bit more difficult to put out outfits together if you have a bunch of unnecessary pieces of clothing. Except that if your style is changing, let it change. The next thing is makeup. Makeup is also pretty similar to fashion. Make sure that you always explore what looks are going to look good on you. Whether it's bold, minimalistic, whatever makeup that you use, make sure that it actually enhances your natural beauty and doesn't take away from it. And a lot of influencers do say this quite often, but it is incredibly important to acknowledge that your face is not there to be covered up by makeup. You are beautiful the way you are. You don't need to wear a certain amount of makeup to make yourself look different, to make yourself fit in. Last year, I used to wear this fat like eyeliner and it looked really bad on me and I didn't even really consider it. I kind of just did it because it was a trend of the Doyen makeup, if you guys know that trend. I really did like that trend, but I personally think that it didn't suit my face type. These days, I enjoy a simple look, but if you guys actually want to experiment what makeup is good on you, I would recommend to start off with mascara and concealer and a little bit of lip product and then over time, you can build your routine and find what actually works for you and if you find that maybe heavy makeup doesn't really look good on you then I would recommend to switch it up change it up doesn't matter and you can try what works for you physical well-being is incredibly important especially when it comes to your beauty 
sleep at least eight hours if not just sleep as much as you can because sleep really helps to rejuvenate your body it helps you to get rid of dark circles and also it helps you just to feel more energized and recharged over time incorporate movement into your day-to-day -day life 10 to 30 minutes of exercise is even good for the average person for example you could even go on a walk for 30 minutes and that would be movement you don't need to have money to be able to move you don't have to go to the gym if you actually don't have have that money to go to the gym I would prefer to do some YouTube home workouts or just going out for a walk because it's literally free and it's so good for your mental and physical health drink lots of water because and water is incredibly important it helps keep your skin more plump and in the holidays I have been drinking a lot more water my skin is glowing a lot more and I actually feel more energized have a healthy balanced diet sometimes I tend to struggle with this having three meals a day avoid you from having meals in between so try Try not to skip breakfast and try not to have little meals. I also um, don't drink many fizzy drinks and I think a lot of people around me know this and I think it's just a habit that I've developed since I was younger. I kind of just imagine drinking fizzy drink as drinking a bunch of sugar chemicals. There's no need to drink fizzy drinks and if you are addicted or anything to, like that, obviously it's difficult to rewire the way that you think. Just cut out the fizzy drinks. That's the easiest way that you can have a balanced diet also please eat enough and don't under eat when i was 12 to 13 this might be a little bit sensitive but i used to think that if i didn't eat then i wouldn't gain weight which was actually false because when you don't eat your body eats all its muscle your metabolism slows down and then your body starts to develop and gain more weight over time genuinely if you know that you're still hungry i recommend to still eat more because it's what your body really needs and you have to take care of yourself but if you're eating too much then kind of acknowledge that maybe you shouldn't eat too much never blame yourself for the amount that you're eating as long as it works for you then it doesn't really matter what you're eating compared to other people if you want to lose weight try to invest in a more healthier and sustainable way last but not least for beauty is posture tongue posture and actual posture for example tongue posture is a lot of people say like mewing so you're maintaining a proper breathing posture so you're breathing through your nose not through your mouth and also a proper tongue posture is going to get you to have a more defined jaw more developed face especially when you're younger it's more important to catch up on this actual posture is very important I'm really bad at my real posture because of how much studying I do so I'm trying to undo that by doing more exercise strengthening my back and core so make sure you have a good center of gravity when you're walking when you're anywhere so it signals to other people how confident you are in yourself even if you're confident but you have bad posture people are going to instantly assume that you're not as confident no one's going to be assuming that I'm confident if I'm sitting like this. If I'm sitting like this, people are going to view me as a more confident person. Even if I'm not, posture is playing a really important role in your day-to-day -day life. To strengthen your posture, there are so many posture exercises that you can do, but also just doing a one minute plank every single day will help strengthen your core so you can hold up a good posture. Um, stomach vacuuming also works. You can also just go on a walk with good posture. But over time, if you do work on your posture, you will see good results. Part two of my video is brains brains is the most important part forget about beauty brains is really important knowledge is so very powerful there are a lot of little things that can make you more intelligent over time the first thing that i want to explain is there is definitely a difference between being intelligent and being good at school if you're seeking help on school i do have two videos already uploaded so you can watch that after this but this video is mostly on how you can be intelligent regardless of any situation you have to be able to deal with new or difficult environments analyze situations and finding a quick or fast solution to any problem think more internally we are taught in school how to communicate with other people but we don't really learn much of how to communicate with ourselves and how to figure out what we actually want we should be trying to work every single day to be more self-aware to actually have more self-understanding the more self-acknowledgement that you have towards yourself will drastically change the way that you think and it's going to change the way you approach life and also the way that people view you if you have a really good relationship with yourself people are going to know that you're a high value person they're going to know that you're highly intelligent and they're going to know that you have a good mindset i advise you to always spend time frequently reflecting 
knowing what you want, understanding your thoughts and your way of thinking, healing from your traumas or past problems by practicing self-care, whatever that may be for you. There are some questions that I'm just going to read out from my laptop that is going to help you to become more self-aware and it's going to help you figure out what works best for you. So I would recommend just pause this video or do this when the video is finished. Bring out a journal or anything that would help. Which areas in my life am I most stressed about? What are some things that I should let go of? Do I have any past traumas that I have not healed from? Is there anything bothering me at the moment which is affecting my work ethic? Do I have a healthy relationship with myself? Why is this important? When you ask yourself questions about yourself, over time you're going to be more confident and you become more happy and content with yourself. Becoming intelligent is just knowing what works for you and what doesn't. Next is reading books. Reading books is honestly underrated. A lot of people don't read books these days. Reading books is how to make more knowledgeable. A book can have a million ways to make you more intelligent. Right now I'm reading this small book called End of Procrastination and it's actually helped me gain so much insight on procrastination and the way that my brain actually works. I found this book at the library. You can literally go to the library. It's free. Find books that align with your personal morals. Find books that align with your goals and your personal values because over time if you want to develop your strengths you have to read books that are going to help you become better than you already are. Stop focusing on your weaknesses and find books that are going to invest in your strengths. Once you finish reading a book there are parts that kind of stick out to you so I would recommend having a journal which you can write down the parts of a book that are going to help you and just to remind yourself of the parts that you want to remember. If you find it difficult to read a book which is totally fine there are podcasts there are YouTube videos just like this and there are talks which all explain how to level up your life, how to become more intelligent. Having brains is being able to organize your life and your goals. A high value skill that people have is just being able to look at a list of tasks and knowing how to prioritize the most important and the least important. This is a very advantage skill because people that spend time in the things that work the most for them are the ones that are gonna get the higher return on investment. Scrolling on my phone, I'm not gonna get anything in return, but I know that I still have to do the other tasks later on, but I might prefer Format at a lower level of output. Once you start focusing on what is more important to you, then over time you're going to see your growth and your intelligence grow even faster because you're investing in the things that are more important and the things that are going to give you the results that you need. Another example is if you are trying to heal from something but you're avoiding it and you're just putting it off, going on your phone, hanging out with your friends, or listening to music, if you know that you need to heal and you're putting that thing off, when you try to heal, it's gonna become much harder. Whereas the person that chooses to heal first, they're the ones that are going to get the highest return on investment because they've already healed that fast. They can do the things that they want to do. Being able to do it in your head is the most fastest way. But for example, if you're just starting out, write the tasks of the things that you need to do and really think to yourself, what is the most important thing to me right now and what should I not be doing? Have a list of the things you must do, you should do. The things on your must list should be the highest priority at the moment. And the could or should list, that is a thing that is kind of iffy, you're not sure if you should do it and it's not going to really give you much value, that is a thing that you should avoid. Focus on your must list. With the skill, you're going to become much more efficient at managing your time and time. You're able to apply it to many areas of your life. You work smarter, not harder. Harvard psychologist and professor Howard Gardner introduced the MI theory in his book in 1983. He says that humans have eight different types of intelligence. We could all be a combination of these different types of intelligences, but sometimes we are more likely to be one type of intelligence than the other. So once you take a quiz on the eight types of intelligence, you're able to find your strengths, see what works best for you, and try to work more efficiently. Use it to your advantage. Once you understand this, you're able to find techniques that help you learn better, you're able to approach life in a more different way that works the best for you. For example, I'm a more musical person and also a introspective person so I really think internally and I also really apply a lot of music to my day-to-day -day life. For example, this music theory can really help me if I'm trying to study for exams, a little bit of music in the background is really going to help me focus. But also, I'm a more introspective person, journaling and doing all that stuff is really helping me heal and really connect to who I am. So everything's going to work differently for you, but once you figure out what type of intelligence you are and what type of thinker you are, you're able to apply it to your life. So once you finish watching this video, I would highly recommend to do a quiz to find out what type of thinker you are. Intelligent people know when situations no longer serve a purpose and they know when to leave and they know their value. When you sense disrespect or you sense something off, 
trust your gut and leave the situation immediately. Do what is best for you because you have to acknowledge that if a situation is no longer serving what it was meant to do, then there's no purpose in staying. You're wasting time and you're wasting your effort. If there is a friendship where you know that you're being disrespected and you're not getting the things that you need out of the friendship, then even if you have no friends after leaving the friendship, when you realize that a person or a circumstance is actually giving you more negatives than positive, then you have to acknowledge this, then leave. Intelligent people are okay with change. They're okay with challenges and they're okay to try something different. Sometimes people can make you grow and people or circumstances can actually make you challenge yourself but sometimes it is in a negative way. Don't allow the pressure of other people of joining environments make you want to be a part of it. If you simply don't want to be a part of an environment, don't let the pressure of anything force you into joining it. Personally think about it if you fit in with a situation. Value yourself and know your worth. This one is a little bit different but always treat others with kindness and treat others with respect because what you give is what you get. If you're projecting onto people and hating people and actually being really jealous and maybe you're judging someone based off their appearance or even their personality, genuinely think about it. If you keep on saying this out loud and you keep on thinking this, you're going to become just like that. You're going to be seen with a negative attitude and people are going to view you quite differently. When you treat people with respect and kindness, you won't necessarily gain the same thing back, but then you know your worth and you know to be kinder to yourself because insecure people and people that actually beat other people up, they are the ones with problems and they are the ones that need to heal. Stop judging other people, stop judging other people's lifestyle, focus on yourself and focus on your growth. Intelligent people may be smart, but they're also very kind. Being kind to other people, you don't know what the value that people can bring into your life. If you unknowingly be nice to a stranger, you don't know what opportunities they can offer you. Even if they don't offer you an opportunity, it can happen. Just make sure that you're treating everyone with respect and kindness not to have good things to happen to your life simply because that is the way that you should be living. Take risks, make mistakes and learn from your mistakes. Ask yourself any person that you see as successful. There is no way they haven't made a mistake while trying to become successful or trying to become intelligent. There is no way. Intelligent people are the ones that actually don't care if they make a mistake and they don't care if they fail. They are the ones that pick themselves up after they fail. They try to analyze the situation, see how they can do things differently next time, and they see how they can learn from their mistakes to become a better person. An intelligent person is someone who will always seek growth, and they're always trying to find ways to make themselves a better person and to make themselves more intelligent. They anticipate that every single day they're going to be better than who they were yesterday. Maybe their growth is like this, but that's wrong. Every single day, you may be growing up in upwards condition, but some days are worse. So maybe your growth might be looking like that. You know that you won't get to where you need straight away, but you know that your growth is going to be increasing overall, but you know it's not going to be showing in a linear type of graph. Some days you're going to be less productive. You're going to maybe drop a little bit, but over time, you're going to see that growth slowly, but surely. They expect that at least in a certain time period they're going to be better than what they were maybe a month ago and they know that the progress they're making they're not trying to compare it to the other people and the people that are around them don't try to get stuck in the loop of trying to be competitive and be better than other people might work might motivate you for a little bit but you're going to be stuck in the loop where you're trying to constantly compete for a role or a designated place in society you're never going to be truly intelligent if you're trying to push into the norms of society you have to think about how to be intelligent for yourself honestly a lot of this work is just the internal thinking you have to keep it more private and think more to yourself next this kind of ties in with the last one when you make mistakes ask yourself questions so for example you might be asking yourself what do i need to do differently why did this go wrong? What should I be doing next? What should I be trying to learn? What should I try to find out? What is something that I should be doing to be able to prevent this mistake from happening again? Even if the mistake does happen again, that's totally fine. You acknowledge it and it's okay. But asking questions, if only to yourself, that is fine. But if you need to ask questions with other people, you're going to get the answers that you need eventually. You're not afraid of asking for help. You have to share that with other people and you have to give your knowledge to other people and also gain knowledge from other people by asking questions and seeking help. Asking questions will challenge yourself to find a solution. If you're not asking questions and you're just thinking that maybe you failed, it's okay, I'll just move on. You're not going to get your answer that you want. You're not going to get a solution. When you make a mistake, make sure you ask questions and try to find a way to solve the mistake. If you don't ask questions and you don't get help, then honestly, it could be impossible. Last but not least, 
for brains is keeping hobbies. This is such an important part of everyone's life and I feel that we should be working towards this every single day and we should be acknowledging our hobbies more often. Hobbies will bring you a purpose and people with hobbies actually seem a lot more attractive than people that don't have hobbies. Because the hobbies occupy you and they make you feel a lot more fulfilled with your time, prevent you from being distracted from things that don't serve you, especially in your downtime when you're supposed to be resting and healing. Calling you on your phone is not actually resting or healing you, whereas doing your hobbies and doing things that make you happy is what you should be implementing in your life to become more fulfilled. Hobbies are really important. If you find it difficult to keep hobbies, there is a three hobby rule that I honestly stand by. So this rule goes by one hobby is something that will keep you creative. For creativity, you could be singing, you could be journaling, writing, sewing, anything that kind of gets your creative brain flowing. Next is a hobby that is going to keep you physically active. This is going to maintain your physical health, but also a lot of physical hobbies actually really connect to your mental health. A physical hobby is going to keep you in check, but also it's going to make you feel a lot more motivated on the days that you don't. The last is a hobby that is going to develop your skills or your knowledge. This could be anything to do with reading, researching, planning, studying, learning a language. Those type of hobbies are the ones that are going to make you more knowledgeable and level up your life. These type of skill knowledge hobbies are the ones that are going to keep you the most occupied. It's going to require a lot of work but once you obtain that hobby and you kind of get going you're going to become much more intelligent over time. Lastly is an optional hobby which some people preach is to have a hobby which you can make money from. This type of hobby can also tie in with purpose and having something that will occupy you and give back to the community. For example me starting a channel Yes, it makes me a little bit of money, but I think it's mostly to help other people to become better and also just to connect with other people. Sometimes if you wish, you're able to switch up most of your hobbies like your creative and your active hobbies. You should be more consistent with your skill and knowledge hobbies or the money hobby. I highly recommend just keeping a long list of hobbies because some days I honestly hate some of my hobbies, but then maybe the next day I'm gonna love it because having a lot of hobbies just give you the option to do the things that you want. Honestly, just being a more well-rounded person. So it is really important to incorporate what I'm saying into your everyday lives. You can listen. You're never gonna see the results if you're not putting any work. So if you found something very useful in this video, make sure to write it down or just constantly remind yourself to do it every single day. Like I said in the introduction, I'm going to be posting a link down below of the full ultimate guide so you guys can journal it you can do whatever you want with the document make sure you guys stay tuned for more content in the future and i love you guys bye how do people do that i wish you the best of luck so you're going into 2024 with beauty and brains and everything that you need to become the best version of yourself in 2024 bye guys i'll see you in the next video